one of the most important things to understand about what sacred geometry really is, is simply the study of patterns. Everything has a pattern behind it. The way we use our mind, the way we use our emotions, the relationships that we create, all of our activities in the world, everything in life has a pattern. And then when we deal with any type of actual physical manifest thing, what manifested it was a specific energy pattern. We learned that today in biology, chemistry, and physics. Look at the book General Chemistry by Linus Pauling, and you'll see the illustration of what are the actual chemical structures behind all physically manifest things in front of you. This is something of great significance. So no matter what part of life you're working on, whether it's material science or whether it is on self-development, it's all based on a particular pattern. If you can begin to learn what the most functional patterns are, then you can craft your life into anything. You can form your physical body. You can form your energetic body. Every aspect of your life is based on pattern. And so it's all a matter of getting out of the reactive mind dysfunctional patterns to become very conscious and clear about what is the correct pattern for our thinking, feeling, actions in the world. And then sky's the limit. The world becomes a magical place and every moment in this limited time opportunity becomes an amazing uh, playground of things that we can experience and explore and create and help ourselves and other people with. Now, if we go into the technical side of sacred geometry, then literally the name is sacred geometry. So geo is the earth, metry is measurement. So it's the sacred measurement of the earth. And what that really means is it is understanding the non-physical spiritual energy and consciousness patterns behind everything that creates our experience in earthly incarnation. So sacred geometry applies to everything. It's the patterns of everything at every level, not only on the physical plane, but all higher planes as well. And just as a quick side note, because we spoke to it last time, um, it, it's not this, you know, this. I think a lot of people hear spiritual or sacred geometry and think of it as this kind of spiritual woo-woo thing. But we were talking to it last time, I mean, even in just Fibonacci or golden ratio hidden within all nature or mm -hmm. the ge geometric patterns that become um, visible in like a snowflake. Um, all of these things that are very tangibly real that we can see the patterns that are existing within all life. Um, I feel like just make it more tangible as to you know, it's not this thing that you have to like believe in, but it's, it's a reality that you mm -hmm. can actually perceive. So uh, you study any deep textbook, again, in biology, chemistry, physics, there are manuals of sacred geometry. There is how are things in the physical world put together as a pattern. So it, it's actually at its core, not woo-woo at all. All modern science is sacred geometry. Now they won't accept that because they think nothing is sacred. Everything is a physical accident and has no meaning or purpose. <laughs> so they're not going to agree with the sacred part. But they'll certainly agree with the measurement part, that we can measure and try to control everything. That's the approach of materialistic science. But if we understand that there is a deeper consciousness and energy behind everything, then it automatically becomes sacred. It's part of a much more important process. And so seeing it from that particular perspective then that sacred measure of the earth then becomes the way also that as we begin to move our consciousness from the external appearances of things on the physical world, which is what we do when we move our physical senses outward to pick up sensory information in the phenomenal three-dimensional physical world around us. Instead, we reverse that direction through things like the zero-point centering practice, that I teach in my online classes, where you go into the center of the center of the center and begin to go into the inner world. And then that will turn insight out at a certain point and start to flood outward. And I refer to this as a zero point centering and then radiance practice. It's an inward movement and an outward movement. It's the pulsation of all life. And so as we have that inward movement, one of the ways that sacred geometry manifests today in art is through people doing psychotropics. So you look at things like the work of Alex Gray that has become very well-known and successful. It's basically what he's seeing as what we tend to refer today as the matrix, but essentially it's the sacred geometric grids behind everything in physical creation, the patterns behind it. So you see a combination of energy patterns and 
the patterns of human physical structure being deconstructed on artwork like that. So a lot of people are finding that in higher non-physical perception, sacred geometry is what you're perceiving. So I also like to refer to then sacred geometry as the divine language. It's the divine language of all creation. It's literally the language that the angelic beings use to create the physical phenomenal world and to create all worlds. It's literally a articulate language of creation, a language of form, a language of energy, a language of consciousness that creates everything into its manifestation pattern. And things may manifest on the etheric energy level that don't manifest physically. But nonetheless, on every plane, things have to manifest. Thank you.